cyberfret.com. Hey, how's it going? It's Sean Bradshaw from cyberfret.com. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you some slash style sus4 lead guitar licks. And uh, so first of all, I'm just going to kind of put on a jam track, kind of play the uh, ideas that I'm going to show you, and then I'll come back and kind of break them apart. So that was kind of what we're going to be taking a look at in this lesson. Um, there's some, you know, like I said, some slash inspired sus4 lead guitar licks. And uh, first of all, let's take a moment and talk about what is a sus4. Now, if you've ever played a basic D chord and put your pinky down on the third fret of the first string, that is a D sus4 chord. All right. Or if you've ever played a basic A chord and um, played the note that's on the uh, third fret of the second string, that is an A sus4 chord. And kind of the uh, licks that we're going to be looking at here are going to be based around those two chord shapes. So the first one here, I'm going to play this for a uh, D chord. This is these licks can be moved around different places, and I'll talk about that here in a minute, but I'm going to start off by playing this uh, over a D chord, and I'm going to play at the seventh fret on the second string. I'm going to take that note and bend it up a half step, the equivalent of going up to the eighth fret. So it's going to sound like that eighth fret on the second string. And then I'm going to play that note that's on the first string at the tenth fret. That note is actually the D and when you're playing this lick you're gonna kinda center around playing that uh, that note that's uh, you're playing with your pinky so uh, I'll move it around here in a minute and you'll see that but the full lick here is I'm bending up playing that tenth fret on the first string then picking the note on the second string already bent up and letting it back down. So I bend up and bend back down. Now there's actually all kinds of little variations you can do. You don't I can start with a bent up. You know, anything where I'm kind of going between those those two notes and then play, you know, putting in that uh, note on the first string with my pinky. Now, if I wanted to move this around, again, I gotta I gotta focus my attention on that note that I'm playing on the first string. So I'm playing this as a D right now, and that note that's at the tenth fret on the first string is a D note. If I wanted to play this as a G, I'm gonna jump up so that my pinky's playing that fifteenth fret on the first string. So my first finger is at the twelfth fret, and um, this kind of comes out of, you can also, if you're, if you're playing some other things, comes out of a basic major pentatonic shape. You know, if you don't, not really familiar with the, the pentatonic shapes, don't worry about it, but this kind of, you can play this lick and throw in, you know, some, some pentatonic things to kind of fill it out, but... Um, so that that's the idea for this first 
uh, lick. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is really just the same notes, but kind of in a different position. I'm going to play this again starting off as a D. I'm going to take my second finger and put it on the 11th fret of the third string and bend that up a half step so it sounds like the 12th fret on the third string. And then I'm going to play the uh, first string at the 10th fret with my first finger this time. Same notes. And the reason why you'd play in a different place, you know, different set of notes that you... You know, different different scale positions. Um, but again, without even knowing any of the other scale positions, you're going to be able to play this lick over a D major chord or move it around. If I wanted to play this as a B, then my first finger needs to be here at the seventh fret on the first string. You know, a lot of times when you're learning how to play lead guitar, you're just picking up these little little pieces, and you know, eventually you'll be able to, you know, map out where all the notes are and all the scales and fit them all together. But at first, if you just know that this works over a major chord, you can use it every time without even knowing any other notes that you could connect it to. So, and. Now, the next lick that we're going to take a look at is going to kind of have its basis in that, that A sus uh, 4 chord. All right. Um, and I'm going to play this starting out as a D major lick. So I'm going to play this up here at the uh, 7th fret. I'm going to start off with my second finger on the second string at the seventh fret and I'm going to start out with the the note already bent up a half step it's called a pre-bend then I'm going to let down and then I'm going to play the note on the third string with my first finger and then my fourth string with my first finger all at the seventh fret Now the note in this lick that you want to kind of center on is that note that's on the third string. That is the D. All right. So if I wanted to play this as a C, I got to move down so that that note on the third string would be a C. Back up to the D, seventh fret. Now another way that I could kind of find my way to playing this lick is I can still kind of use that note that's on the uh, first string at the 10th fret as my guide. It's really in the same place as that first lick. So even though I'm never playing that note on the first string, I can still use it kind of as my way to find where to start playing these uh, this lick. So they really kind of work hand in hand. So a lot of people know the names of the notes on the first string, fifth and sixth strings better because of learning bar chords and, and things like that. But as you start moving ahead with your lead guitar playing, you want to make sure that you're getting to know the names of the neck, uh, no, names of the notes on the neck, um, on all of the strings because you know little lead parts like this focus and uh, have their centering points on different strings, different places. All right. Now I'm going to play this same lick, only I'm going to play on the first, second, and third strings. It's really the exact same configuration of notes. Um, it's just playing in kind of a different, out of a different shape. All right. And I'm going to switch this time to a G major chord. And the reason I'm doing that is I can stay right in this the same position and that first uh, jam that I was doing where I was playing these I was actually going between 
a D major chord and a G major chord. So for this version of the lick, I'm going to start out here on the seventh fret of the first string. I have that note pre-bent up that half step. I let it down a half step. Play the note that's on the uh, second string at the eighth fret. And then the uh, third string at the seventh fret. Now this is really kind of coming out of the shape of that basic D sus4 chord, you know, down here. All right. Now, if I wanted to play, we started off playing this in D on the fourth, third, and second strings. If I wanted to play this uh, version that's on the first, second, and third strings, I'd have to go up so that the note that was on my second string would be a D. And that is at the 15th fret on the second string. Now you notice that um, this and this, they sound you know about the same you, this one up here at the you know where I'm playing my first finger at the 14th fret and that note on the second string at the 15th fret that's an octave higher than this one that I'm playing down here at the seventh fret but it's the same notes same configuration so you know I'm, I'm just showing you two different ways that you can really play basically the same lick just on different set of strings and gives you different options of other kind of scale things that you might play around it. Now, I'm going to um, kind of expand on that idea a little bit. I'm going to come back down to my uh, D pattern here. And I'm just going to add a couple of other notes lower. I'm going to, after I play that, I'm going to slide down to my 5th fret on the 4th string, and then to the 4th fret, and then I'm going to play the note that's on the 5th string at the 5th fret. So I have this. And that note on the 5th uh, string at the 5th fret is a D. So that all works over basically any D major, you know, it works over a D major chord, works over any major chord. I've just got to move it around. You know, here it's at for D. That note on the third string is D. That note on the, the uh, first string at the 10th fret, D. And that note I actually ended on, on the fifth string at the fifth fret, D. All, all centering points so you can find your way. If I wanted to play this as an E, just scoot up two frets. Now let's expand that, that uh, lick on the first, second, and third strings. So I'm going to go back to my G. All right. But this time I'm going to extend it by sliding down to the fifth fret on the third string, fourth fret on the third string, and then playing that note that's on the fourth string at the fifth fret. So all together it is okay, doing my pre-bend up on that first string, letting it down, that's on the seventh fret, And my second finger plays the second string at the eighth fret. First finger is on the third string at the seventh, sliding down to the fifth, sliding down to the fourth, and playing the note that's on the fourth string at the fifth fret. And this is all a G major 
Bad note to G. Bad note to G. All right. So you kind of have, you know, basically, you know, three ideas, but I showed you, you know, a couple of ways to play the same idea. And um, the way that you want to practice these is to just kind of move them around, be able to find different chords. And remember, these work over any major chord, so you can move around. You have, uh, you know, the jam track I was playing was going between a D chord and a G chord. So I could take those ideas and all of them, move them so that they are D, and then move them around on the neck so that they are G. And so it's a great way to get a lick that gives you some chord sound. Sometimes, you know, if you're first learning to improvise, you start, you know, riffing out on minor pentatonic or major pentatonic and and uh, don't really acknowledge the chords that are going by. And this is a great way to kind of get into playing some lead guitar stuff that uh, is playing over individual chords. So... All right, so have fun with your new slash licks. Have a good one.